Hello, fellow gamers, and welcome to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. Today is a bonus round episode, and we are going to be giving our past selves gaming advice, or it might be us from the future giving our current selves advice. I know that might sound a little convoluted. Don't worry, it'll all make sense here in just a minute. Please take a moment to rate our show five stars and leave a written review. Also, head on over to MultiplayerSquad.com, where you can sign up on Patreon. You can support the show and get perks like two bonus Squadcast episodes every month. Again, you can do that at MultiplayerSquad.com. I am your host, Paul, and joining me, he's wishing he could go back and tell his younger self to find some new favorite candies outside of bottle caps and toffee. It's Josh. Hey, past self. <laughs> The bottle caps and toffee are the best. You don't listen to Paul. Oh, you, what is, what is this? You, you, you do you, Slander Josh. from the future? What is, can we do that? <laughs> sure, why not? We, we got we've we've got very advanced technology here on the show. All right, and joining me and Josh, he's wishing he could go back and tell his younger self to play some better space games like Mass Effect and Halo instead of Elite Dangerous. He's now shaking his head in disappointment. It's Michael. I <laughs> resent 100% of what you just said. It's it's appalling that you would even say something like that. My past self should have actually hopped on Elite Dangerous much earlier. <laughs> I think even people that love all three games would probably still agree Mass Effect and Halo are the uh, the two winning, winning ones in the bunch. That's arguable. Arguably yeah. wrong. <laughs> all right well before we jump into this bonus round here we do want to give a quick shout out here to a patreon supporter we do have wayne01 who has signed up with epic status and we also want to give a very special thank you to current legendary supporter red letter and also epic supporters ace of shame yaya arizona yoda and papa thunderfist we don't have to repeat all this back to you right now do we like no. Thank you, everybody. It's not a, it's <laughs> not a test, Michael. I was yeah, like, okay. shoot, I should have taken notes. <laughs> also, you could just look on the Discord server for the answers to the test, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, just <laughs> look up the gold names for Legendary, Purple for Epic, and uh, that'll let you know. <laughs> well, to all of those people, thank you legitimately from our hearts. Yes, thank you so much. All right, so this bonus round episode, this is kind of a, an interesting one, something that we've never tried before. Josh, do you want to tell the people what it is that we're doing? I, I, Paul, I'm going to give you full credit on this one because usually <laughs> you are not the creative one when it comes up with topics. No. It's usually either <laughs> myself bouncing a bunch of really stupid topics off of you guys or Michael chiming in or, you know, you, you, you have your moments, Paul, but this was all you. And you were like, hey, let's mix it up a little bit. We're due for a bonus round. We've done a tournament recently. We did listener questions. You were like, let's get a little crazy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, Paul, yeah. like, I like this. <laughs> and then so you had the idea that it would be really neat to do an episode where we give advice to our younger selves or we mm-hmm. maybe maybe we we look into the future a little bit and we think what would the our future selves come back and tell us like right now. But now that we're all older, we're dads, we're still gamers. We have been our whole life. But it's kind of like what's some of the stuff that you would go back and tell yourself uh about gaming or you know whatever and i was like dude that's actually a really neat idea like yeah. let's make it happen pretty brilliant we actually uh josh and i got together and we said we got to get some creative juices out of paul real fast he's slacking so we got <laughs> together like a lime <laughs> no what we did was we oh. <laughs> so, sorry to tell you this paul but we, Wait, we that... spiked your coca-cola oh, we spiked it go. and no man we got ideas for like months now so stick around guys this shows if you like this show before it's about to get real good he gave us a lot of great content <laughs> Was that all the psychedelics that, that I was experiencing I after don't know. the drink? What Is did you spike it on? with? What did you if spike you've seen the Josh? movie Limitless, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Did one of those. Yeah. yeah Just we one of the that. pills. Whatever yeah. that is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But my favorite part of it all is that I told you guys, I think this would be fun. Like, you go back and you tell your younger self, I, but I don't know how you would word it. And Josh just immediately goes, gaming advice from the future? <laughs> Boom. I was like, this is, this is why we keep you around, Josh. You took my very convoluted idea, you distilled it into like six words, and it made perfect sense. Uh, which is great, because he actually names all the episodes, so it's like, yeah. all right, we got it. <laughs> yeah. So Dang there we it. go. Now somebody's like, these episode titles are dumb. Now they know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can that blame Josh if you yeah. don't like the episode names. I, I, I will say the cyberpunk episode title was a little vanilla, but it got the job done. 
I, I believe was just going for the purity of the episode, Paul. <laughs> yes. You know, the title was Cyberpunk 2077, and I was like, "All right, that 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 works." <laughs> Everybody knew; they knew yeah. right away what That's they true. were getting. That's you true. Know? I'm I'm glad that you were called vanilla. I was called out for being vanilla in Discord last week by somebody else in the Discord. So th- you're the vanilla of the I'm, week this I'm week. I'm pretty sure because you said you would choose mm-hmm. vanilla ice cream out of hey. all the flavors. Michael. You know, you know, literally <laughs> vanilla. <laughs> It's, you know, if you don't think about it, it's got a lot of ingredients anyways, or if you do think about it, like, it's, it's complex. There's a lot of vanilla in there, and there's, what, what else is in uh, there, Paul? Uh, uh, that, that's it. It's an ice cream base and vanilla. That's, uh, that's all it is. Okay, right. so let's start getting into our gaming advice from the future. The way we're going to do this is we're just going to go around in a circle. We're going to read our, or say what our advice is to our younger self or our future selves talking to us now. And then we'll just provide some commentary and we'll just keep going in a circle till we run out of time. Does anybody want to volunteer to go I, first? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first. I'm oh, gonna there get we go. This, our party started because I'm right. pretty shy. <laughs> All right, guys. Strap in, everybody. Here we go. This is, this is, this is kind of a funny story, too. You, you guys can tell me whether you want me to elaborate or not. Dear poor, naive Josh, who might make poor, snap decisions when it comes to video games. When you think you want to buy that $60 copy of Gauntlet Legends for your Nintendo 64 to play with your (laughs) friends over the weekend, just don't. First of all, you're poor. You really can't afford $60 right now. Also, you're going to play it for 30 minutes, then you're going to spend five hours trying to figure out how to re-shrink wrap the box so that you can return it against store policy. (laughs) Okay, first of all, that is 100% a Josh thing to try to return something against store policy. Oh, I didn't try. I did. You got away with it? (laughs) I'm not surprised. I got to tell this story real quick. So this is true. I had some buddies coming over. It was Friday night. We're like, hey, let's play. We're, we want a four-player game. It's Nintendo 64. Bought Gauntlet Legends on a whim. This game sucked. I realized, oh my goodness, I just wasted $60. What do we do? I figured out. I took a Ziploc bag, stuck it over the box, trimmed it, put the box in the oven. The with oven, the cartridge, wow. With the cartridge in it, <laughs> mind you. <laughs> <laughs> melted the Ziploc bag around wow. the box. And wow. this worked. Fiddled with it a little bit, took it to Walmart where I bought it. They said, no, you can't return this. I then took it to another Walmart across town who said, you just tried to return this to that Walmart over there. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, because their systems apparently link up. So they said, we can't take it. On a whim, I went to Kmart. Because Kmart's return policy was, as long as you have the item, you don't need a receipt. So I bring this thing in. One seam on the side is completely split open. It's super thick plastic. looks nothing like shrink wrap. I bring it to their customer service counter. I say, I want to return this. They say, do you have the receipt? I say, no. The lady starts flipping it over, looking at it. I see her picking at the plastic, you know, because you're not allowed to return it if it's opened. And... Lo and behold, she just said, okay, she took it. I got my money back. My wife was, she wouldn't even come in the store with me because she's like, I'm expecting that you're going to get escorted out in like handcuffs, <laughs> but I got away with it. I got my money back. That's wow. like brilliant. That's genius. I am actually like, I, I also during your story just pictured like Walmart customer service. They didn't have it in the system. They were just calling being like, hey, this dude with this gnarly beard just tried to totally return this thing here and it's bogus. So he's coming for you probably. <laughs> You know, the sad thing here is I loved Gauntlet Legends. Yes, I like Gauntlet games. This one, I, maybe it was just the wrong time. Maybe it was that, you know, nobody was planning on hanging out and playing this thing. It was also could be that I really didn't have the money to buy this game either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, Michael. I think we'll hit you next. What advice oh. do you have? So uh, this one's a painful one. I talked about it once a long time ago. When I had a buddy whose girlfriend um, basically hijacked our World of Warcraft guild, she stole it because, you know, if somebody, if the guild leader in World of Warcraft is not online for 30 days, then any officer in the guild can, like, basically petition and almost instantly take over the guild. And what happened was she was, like, our off raid leader. Uh, I don't even, I didn't even know she was an officer, but she basically stole the guild from us. And um, essentially, what she did was she she sold everything we had. She stole all of our money, disbanded the guild, and ran off forever. Um, 
and, and that was very sad for me. And I really just want to look back and tell myself, you know what? It's going to be okay. Because you'll probably <laughs> forget about it in like six months, which you did. You started a new guild and just moved on. Or I can go back in time and just be like, hey, I'll be the off-guild leader and we're not making her an officer. I don't know. One of those two things, I just wanted to bring up this really painful point and just air my laundry for a minute and just bring it up and just <laughs> whine and cry and listen for some sympathy. Now, do you know how many people were in your guild approximately? Four. There was like there was like forty. <laughs> well, we, we had like just forty Michael. or fifty. <laughs> no, we Michael had like 40 and the or girl. 50 super. Okay, listen. Okay, <laughs> we we had like we had a battered hilt that that was tradable. It was worth fifteen k. She stole fifteen k from us. Okay, no, no, really, I'm just kidding. It was it was like forty people that were pretty active. It was a big guild. It was during Firelands too, so it was a while ago. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would that would be during Cataclysm. That would be very sad and very upsetting, especially if it's an active guild, because now you're trying to either chase people back down or now you have to join a new one. But yep. I think that was, I think that's good advice for your younger self, Michael. I remember, I don't remember exactly how the phrase goes, but you know, are you going to be upset about this in two weeks? And if the answer is no, then you shouldn't be upset about it at all. Or it's right. like, are you going to be upset two months from now? You know, and just trying to have that kind of perspective. Ultimately, in the end, it's all just silly digital currency, but it's still sad. Yeah, well, and it was a lot of time because, like, we, like, she even, like, we couldn't, she, she didn't technically remove the guild, so we couldn't keep the guild name. Like, and I tried to petition back, and Blizzard's like, no, that's the rules. What was the name of your guild? It was the Frothing Otter. Yeah. The Frothing Otter. The Frothing Otter. <laughs> that way, we were we were well known. I, I don't remember which server that was on. That was when we were server hopping a little bit. So I think I, we that was the the little stint that I did where we were actually um, Alliance, which actually hurts my soul a little bit because I was Alliance for a little bit. I was I'm a Horde guy for the Horde. You know, Baladash, yeah, Melanor, and all that stuff. <laughs> Josh, do you remember your guild name back in EverQuest? Previs D. Okay, yep. I was in Cons in World of Warcraft. I don't know if it was named after Khan from the Star Trek movie or what, but it was just Khans with an S at the end. And uh, yeah, that was my guild. No clue how it got started. It's funny how you don't <laughs> forget those, though, either, you know, or the no. guild drama. I remember being involved in some serious guild drama from time to time. You know, uh, people like they, I don't know what it is. People like that stuff, I think, even though they hate it. Like, there's this weird thing where it's like if it just it makes you care more. I guess I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Weird. No, it it is because the relationships are formed and stuff. It, it, it truly the guild drama. It happens all the time, and there's always like that one person. Everyone knows that one person in every guild that they're like, "Hey, we need to have this person like kind of mediate this because they're like that caring, compassionate soul that's knowledgeable." And it was always like, "Hey, he can talk about it because I don't know how to approach this subject with this drama." Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next one here. I think it's my turn. So, uh, you know, hi, Paul. I, I know it's summer of 2020. I know that you're currently dealing with the early days of COVID. You're repainting your house because you're stuck at home much of the time. And I know that you're really bored right now. But what I want you to do, I want you to go on YouTube and I want you to follow somebody. Now, this is a guy who does analysis of the stock market. I know this is going to sound crazy. I, I know that you buy all of your games digitally and I know that they've just closed the two close to store <laughs> locations to you. I know where this is going. But my advice is to go follow a certain person <laughs> named Roaring Kitty, aka DFV, because it's family friendly server, aka Keith Gill. And there you go. I mean, this is the best gaming advice I can give my younger self. In invest in GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GME, baby. Oh, to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i when that happened i was floored by it i'm like wait this is real you can oh, do this yeah. it was real it was it very was real. real and oh. uh part two of the advice would be just wait until january 2021 you'll know when the time is right yeah <laughs> ignore the diamond hands memes all of that garbage you'll know when the time is right to sell that's a that's a that's good sound advice, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, man. somehow I think I'm the only person in America that somehow lost money on both GME stock and Bitcoin. I like <laughs> I have so many friends that like maybe made money on one, lost on the other, or made money on both. Somehow I I just ended up in the negative overall. I wound up breaking even, but I could have been up a lot. Like well, yeah, we lot, all saw that. You know for what I mean? Bit. So it was like, I broke even. So am I happy about that? Or could we have made a lot of money? I just always look back and think, man, I, 
I'm a single income family of five. I would really like to invest money right now, but I can't because my kids need school supplies. And so I, I just have my 401k. I've never really, I got a few stocks, but John, uh, Paul, it's funny because you just reminded me, like, it's almost like you were giving yourself Gray Sports Almanac. Remember Back to the Future 2? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Like, like, go back in time and be like, you need to bet on this game, bet on this stock. You're, you just gave yourself Gray Sports Almanac. I love it. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going for. Now, question for you guys. When's the last time you bought something in person at GameStop? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Stood in line for the midnight release. For the midnight? Yep. Yeah. Mm. That that would have been my answer. The only little caveat is I did buy the Super Mario 3D All-Stars, I think it was called. And I had that delivered by DoorDash from GameStop to my Wait, house. Because that was no. during... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is during COVID where they were delivering for free. And so I was like, well, I could go in person or I could just have them drop it off for free same day. So other than that one purchase from GameStop, yeah, everything these days is just digital. But I'm still loving the rebound with GameStop. I really hope that they just keep roaring back. I hate to see those companies go out of business. Yeah. I, I love GameStop. Always have. Ever since that one guy told me to buy the the pre-owned Oblivion expansion, because he's like, listen, we can take it back for any reason whatsoever. No reason. We won't even ask within one week. And I'm like, no, it's only a dollar cheaper than the new one. And the guy was like, no, listen, you buy the used one, you can return it for no reason whatsoever. He's like, you just put the disc in and you never use the disc again because it downloads. And I'm like, he's telling me I can get this for free. Ever since then, man, I've been just GameStop 100%. Last thing I bought there, though, was definitely... um, but up until like a decade ago, because I can't remember when the last thing I bought was, but I bought my daughter. Um, we were looking for a Switch cover for, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, Nintendo Switch. That's the new one, right? I keep wanting to say Wii, but no, it's the Switch. <laughs> the Wii's going back a few years. Yeah. All right, Josh, swinging back your way. All righty. Oh boy, this is I. I this is one that I regret to this day. So, young Josh, when you go to Toys R Us. To buy that Nintendo you've been saving up for all summer long, and you walk in <laughs> filled with excitement, you see the palette where the Nintendo should be, and it's completely empty. Don't buy the Sega that's sitting right next to it. <gasps> there's a reason that the Nintendos are sold out, and there's a stack of Segas sitting right next to it. I know you're impatient. I know you've been saving. I know you want something right now, but... Trust me, wait the three or five days or however long it's going to be before they get more Nintendos in stock and go get your Nintendo then. Don't buy the Sega. Sega sucks. <laughs> Clarify which Sega. Yeah, Sega yeah. Master System. Not the Genesis. Oh. Not the Genesis. This, <laughs> this was the, the Sega Master, Master System. System because it was the no first good games. Nintendo. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because like, like Sega Genesis versus SNES, like arguably some people would say either one's better, but yeah. that's like, dude, like how long? I want to know how long did it take you before you were like, oh, oh no. Um, a couple days. You know, the, the new and the <laughs> excitement was there. It was my Sega you know, I think I was playing Alex Kidd and Sonic, and then your my brother like, has a Nintendo, Nintendo. And then I'm looking, and I'm like, "Why are my games fun like your games?" Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh, man. Can I play your Nintendo? No. And then it's like, dang it. So yeah, I to this day I still regret that, man. Wasn't that the summer that you did a bunch of work for your dad, like digging ditches Dude, or something? I dug, for a, I dug like a 50 yard trench that was go. a good like two <laughs> feet deep. I like no lie. This thing was massive. And it, like that was what I had to use to get like the last 50 bucks that I needed. Oh. That was the like child labor wise. My parents got the best deal ever because I worked so hard for that. And then I couldn't even get my Nintendo. No that one ever works soul. so hard for a master yeah. system. Oh, right, man. nobody ever. <laughs> Not even the creators. <laughs> so, yep. That's my Literally. one that I that may be my biggest regret as a kid when it comes to gaming. Oh, especially cuz that's like a one it feels like a once in a lifetime opportunity to buy a console. It's a huge deal and that's a lot of money when you're a kid. But, like how much were they? They're like $200 yeah, back then or something. I was going to say like 200 bucks. Yeah, but that's like astronomical when you're a little kid, you know? Yeah. Oh, why did I do it? You know why? Because when you get it in your mind that I'm going to buy this and it's not there, you can't just turn around and leave empty handed. You yeah. go, I'm buying something. My kids do it all the time. 
You know, yep. they want something and it's not there. And they're like, well, I'll just buy this. And I'm like, don't. Future Josh <laughs> understands. <laughs> if you have to talk yourself into it, it's probably not worth it. Yeah, them, exactly. <laughs> All right, Michael, what do you got, buddy? So I'm going to go back to the days of naivete with myself and talk about... Uh, I, this is like I was like 18 years old, I think, for this one. I didn't play a lot of games. Um, and EverQuest had just come out. I don't know if there's going to be much to talk about on this one, guys, but uh, dear Michael, 18-year-old Michael, circa December year 2000, listen to me very carefully. She's not really a girl. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what's, what's, what's this story? Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Who are we talking about here? <laughs> no, it's just like, wait, you know, are we talking like, about? Is this Mario? <laughs> Donkey Kong? Right. Donkey no, Kong? You, know, is- you know how it is, like, old days of, like, video gaming and stuff, like, like in EverQuest, like, you'd have, most of the time a guy plays a guy character, girl plays a girl character. Well, I was chasing after this bard forever, like, getting all flirty, like, 18-year-old Michael thought he was hot stuff and everything, and, like, I had this bard friend for, like, I don't know, probably, like, four months, right? And I would, like, bring her, like, weapons and stuff, and then it, it looked like, like maybe maybe too long later i found out no that's a dude dude like mm. you don't need to yep and that's all i gotta say about that like i think everyone's done that before in their life right where there's like hey there's a there's a, there's a little half uh, elf right there she's nope, adorable no nope, can't say i have there michael <laughs> that's a man man <laughs> that's a dude dude <laughs> all right we'll move on now all right <laughs> Uh, pre mumble, pre team speak, pre right. voice over IP days. Yeah, you you couldn't get too thirsty in MMOs. That's 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 playing with fire. Yep. And <laughs> as, fire I mean, as long me. as you just always pretend, Michael. Right. Just don't ever find out the truth. But you see, you found out the truth. Yeah. No. And and I've played like like my my pal my Blood Elf Paladin was a female because I thought that Blood Elf Paladins were ridiculous. This is World of Warcraft. Not yeah, ever. So how many people hit on you? Right. And I would be like, I would literally be like, I'm a dude, dude. Like, cause it would happen. Like somebody would hit on you and I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I'm a dude, dude. He's like, why are you playing a female character? I'm like, cause have you seen the male like blood elves? They look ridiculous. Like they're awful. Look, they, they were awful. It, yeah. Everyone gets it, right? <laughs> there you go. I don't know that we've all been there, but I hear you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the next one here. We are back up to me. All right, here we go. Hi, Paul. It's now fall of 2020. I see you didn't take my advice about YouTube. You're still super poor. That's cool. <laughs> it's all right. I-, I-, I know that you just bought a very expensive PS5 bundle that you're giving the family for Christmas. All right. Y- you're going to want to go ahead and cancel that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What? Uh, uh, well, you know, okay. Maybe, maybe keep it and and scalp it. All right. I'm, I'm, I don't love the idea of doing that. You could probably turn some profit, but maybe you should just go ahead and cancel it. Um, you're you're gonna have that PS5 sit around for approximately two years, and the only game that you're going to have played is Returnal, which is a great game, very good. But to be honest, your PS5 is really just a very large paperweight. Um, there's also this little thing that's really gaining a lot of buzz called Game Pass, and I think you're going to want to go ahead and get an Xbox Series X instead. Oh. Ooh, except... I have, future, I have advice for Future Paul. Except yeah. Future yeah. Paul. God of War Ragnarok's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to go... All with, will I, be well. I yeah. think Past Paul and Future Paul would be arguing with each other, because Past Paul would be like, listen, Future Paul... You didn't get to play God of War Ragnarok. I am better than you. I am smarter because this whole entire $600 system is way worth all of that game. We hope. We hope. Yeah. So what I was going to say is now that I'm this far into the PS5, obviously I'm going to keep it until Ragnarok releases. But at this point, I think I might just sell my PS5 after Ragnarok. I At this point, I don't really know what I'm holding on to it for. I, I mean... Let's talk about that for a second, right? Because <laughs> honestly, if you have a PC, then you can play just about anything that's coming out on Xbox for it. I mean, mm-hmm. PlayStation has always been about the exclusives, but the PS5 has been available since when did it actually launch? 2020? In 2020. 2020. Yeah. So it's two years, two, two and a half years that it's been out. And what exclusive game for the PS5 has made it worth a $500 console? 
not worth 500. Right. I mean, there's good games like Returnal, sure. which is probably, I, I believe they announced it's going to come to PC eventually. And that's the new thing. You, I, Josh, you and I always said, don't buy an Xbox. It's Microsoft. Every single game is going to be on PC. Right. There's zero reason to have a gaming PC and an Xbox unless you want to use your living room TV. But now that Sony is releasing seemingly everything a year or two down the road, at this point, I think you just need a PC. I, I don't think I need a console anymore going forward. I think that we just gave great advice to our listeners present, not even past or future. Like That's great advice. But I mean, what world do we live in where having a PS5 is like, eh, eh. eh. Yeah. Like, I kind of wish I hadn't bought it. Like, can you ever think of a console other than my Sega Master System? <laughs> right. Where somebody's right. been like, eh, I really wish I hadn't bought this console. Uh, no. I, I never regretted my PS4. I loved every minute of it. My Xbox 360, my GameCube, my mm-hmm. Nintendo 64, which was my very first console. All of them. I never once thought, man, I really wish I bought something else. But at this point, I'm thinking... Maybe I just sell it after Ragnarok and, and be done with consoles. I mean, I guess we still have our Nintendo Switch. Like, if you want Nintendo exclusives, you still might want a Switch. But when it comes to just, like, Xbox and PlayStation, I don't think I really need either one at this point. No, yeah. and it's funny because I just went through a whole journey in my head of, like, it's almost like they're, like, Sony and Xbox specifically are, like, are like promoting to not even buy their consoles, too, because they're releasing everything else either later or right now. And I'm like, oh, that's probably because I've heard that they don't really make any money on the hardware. So it's actually kind of better for them just to do it the way that we're doing it and kind of phase out the console. Yeah. So I think that's a sad day. Uh, um, press F to pay respects for Paul's impression oh, of man. PlayStations. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where we're at. All right. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with more multiplayer gaming podcast. OK, so it's back to me. Back to you, Josh. All right. I, I got it. This one I have to do because, man, sometimes you really wish you could just give yourself advice. So, okay, Josh, when your coworkers dare you to try the cinnamon challenge, I know you want to accept. <laughs> I know you want to accept because you can't pass up a challenge. But don't. I'm telling you, you almost die, and it's not pleasant <laughs> at all. Yes, you do survive the ordeal, but you basically become reduced to a snotty, coughing, teary-eyed, mucus-covered pile of cinnamon and sweat and like just terribleness. Don't do it. I know you think you can. Trust me, you can't. <laughs> Dude, oh. what is it with these online challenges? Do you remember like Chubby Bunny? No. Where it was uh, how many yeah, marshmallows somebody's. could you yeah. stick in your mouth? Oh. And it'd be like 40. And like some kids died because of it. And then you had like the cinnamon challenge. And people don't know if you inhale it, like that stuff will just like stick to your throat and lungs. It's it's not cool. I was convinced that I could do this. And I was yeah. like, everybody doesn't swallow hard enough. You've got to just swallow it in one <laughs> gulp. And so I went for the gusto. Yeah. And when I went to swallow, dude, it made it halfway down my throat before <laughs> oh, no. it lodged. I coughed. I coughed out a massive cloud of cinnamon. But mm-hmm. then I needed to try to breathe in. But your body will not let you breathe in when your throat is filled with cinnamon. I yeah. literally thought I was going to suffocate. And then oh. it was like, it was really funny for like the first like 40 seconds. And then I think everybody started getting scared because I still couldn't breathe. (laughs) So then I'm like, I'm making this like retching sound. I'm trying to get whatever's in my throat out. I've got no oxygen. I'm basically choking to death. I did survive, but man, it was really, really dumb. Like I've done some, some, some dumb stuff where I'm like, eh, you know, whatever. Okay. Like this one, I'm like, I could have (laughs) died. Dude, death by cinnamon challenge is kind of like low key. The most humiliating way to go. Yes, it like, would yeah. be really he couldn't bad. handle that spicy cinnamon. <sighs> I bet I smelled really good though. <laughs> yeah, you'd certainly be a candidate for the Darwin Awards winner of the year. Yeah, so I know it had oh, nothing man. to do with gaming, but uh, I had to. I had to at least give myself, <laughs> myself that advice. <laughs> like it's not worth it, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since we're on the topic, funny enough, when uh, my wife was working at a girls' group home. She would always bring all the kids over for like holidays and stuff like that to to our family gatherings. 
And it was Thanksgiving of whatever year the cinnamon challenge got popular. I remember it was like right before Thanksgiving and we lined up thinking this was a good idea. All 10 girls who are wards of the state, you know, these poor girls are in foster care living in a group home. They were all like 10 to 16 years old. And we gave all of them giant spoonfuls of cinnamon. And what's funny is the only one that got it down was our future first daughter. So our my oldest daughter took it like a champ, swallowed it, did not cough, got it down immediately. And I was like, Oh, that's my daughter right there. She <laughs> killed it. That's not why we adopted. I was gonna her. wait. Is she, it like a knew. gladiator pit? Or? It was. Yeah, <laughs> it's like right, surviving kids, one gets adopted. Whichever one swallows the cinnamon gets adopted. <laughs> no, no, no. It was already in the works, but they were still living in the group home, and my wife and I were working on getting licensed to bring in the sibling group. And so, yeah, M- Monica knocked it out of the park. I was so impressed. It was like my first proud dad moment because I didn't have any kids yet. I don't know how it's physically possible, to be honest, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a very, very strong and stubborn person. Yeah. Like, she's the kind of person that could suppress those primal needs to cough and choke. And Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah. Just wrestled it to the ground. Never again. I'm so happy I've never tried that before. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Such a stupid challenge. Listen to future Josh. (laughs) All right, Michael. Moving on to you. Yeah, I'm going to make all the old people cry with this one because, Uh and by old people, I mean us and, you know, people at our age, you know, uh, because this is like one of those things that you just, you wish was a thing and it will never be a thing again. Um, I'm going to tell myself in the past, listen, hey, never say no to a LAN party Mm. because they're going to go away and they'll never come back. Like we used to get together and we'd be like, we'd be like, hey, so, uh, my buddy Carl has an Xbox. My buddy Shane has an Xbox. I've got an Xbox. Let's get together and bring all of our Xboxes and just play games in the same room. We could hook them up and do like the 20-person Halo game or whatever. Or even just we'd bring all of our computers over and play like just any online game together. And now like with just how it is now, like with voice, with, you know, voice chat, with, you know, we, you know Discord and it used to be Ventrilo back in the day and TeamSpeak and all those things and all the online gaming Land parties are just, they're dead. They don't happen anymore. But they were so much fun. We would do like a whole weekend and be like, hey, we're having, we, every year my buddy Reese would have a video game weekend. And I remember by, by the end of it, I was like, hey, I just, I want to go do other things. I don't want to come over to the land party. I'll, I'll meet you guys next time. And I'm like, dude, now I need to go back and be like, never say no to a land party because when they're gone, you're going to, you're going to miss them. And I do. I remember having an entire cabinet filled with networking gear. Yeah. <laughs> just for the purpose of like landing. Like you needed a couple 50 foot Ethernet oh, yeah. cables. You needed to have a couple switches because back then I remember the really nice switches that would have like 10 connectors were pricey. So I had a couple of cheap four port switches. Yeah. And so you'd like pull them out. You'd have to daisy chain them all together, hook up everybody. Yeah. What good times. And yeah, that was like such a short period of time where you had multiplayer games, but it was not yet online and you had to do it in person. That was like a four to five year window. It feels like it it was really short. But the ability to play with your friends where normally if you were playing online, you were always with strangers. That's what set it apart, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. I really do miss those land days. That was a lot of fun. All right, Paul, what do you got? All right, next one up here. Uh, let's see. Okay, here, here's a good one. All right, we're going to go back a little further for mine since mine have been uh, all during COVID. <laughs> all right. Hi, Paul from 2015. Um, I see that you were able to get a Rock Band 4 band in a box for your PlayStation 4. Uh, rock on, dude. That That's awesome. <laughs> hey, in, in like a year, you're going to be totally sick of Rock Band, and you're going to think it's a great idea to just go ahead and sell the whole kit for like $30 to GameStop. (laughs) Uh, Don't. Don't do that. You can find space, all right? Just find somewhere, a back closet, somewhere in the house. You've got bedrooms for your kids. Hide it in their closet, whatever you need to do. Because in 2022, somewhere around October 20th, you're going to really get a hankering for Rock Band. You're going to look it up on Amazon (laughs) And you're going to realize that a, that a used kit is $900. Oh, guys, you cannot play rock band anymore unless you're willing to shell out 
hundreds and hundreds of dollars. That is a used kit that is rated very good on Amazon, <laughs> $899. Oh my goodness. Really? That yes, hurts. 100%. And who knows how long that drum kit and the guitar are going to work? Because those things don't last. I was going to say, right. you know, you if you buy it, them. like one of the drum panels is not going to register. One of the buttons oh, yeah. on the guitar is going to be broken. Oh, man. I miss Rock Band so much. I don't know if this is just me. There are certain songs that I hear, and I just immediately think Rock Band, or I immediately think Guitar Hero, like Weezer. Say it ain't so. Oh. Every single time I hear it, I just go right back to, oh, man, I really wish I could play that right now in Rock Band. I really wish I could never hear that song again. Also, yeah. I'm just saying, if you had Rock Band, Paul, I would be over to play. Would you really? I really would. Yeah. Uh, I'm, not musical. Rock band? I'm not musical at all, but I am not afraid to make an idiot out of myself either. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. We're, doing a, we're doing a deep dive on Rock Band for oh, sure. Man. Um, no, I used, to, I used to play Rock Band and not even knowing like the words to songs, you could just hit the tones and the pitches. Yeah. And so yeah, like yeah. with Weezer, it'd be like, <laughs> and it'd be like, well, that didn't work. But like, you don't even need to know the words. You could just hum it. And I found that like I was actually better at rock band as the singer if I didn't try to say the words and just tried to hit the notes. And it was like, all right, I can just I'm an instrument with my voice, but there's no there's just noises coming out of my mouth. You know, I always loved the video games that came with all the crazy peripherals. Like I remember buying House of the Dead with all the guns. That you could point at the screen and shoot. Yeah. And inevitably, those games, you get sick of them so fast. And whether yeah. it's like the guns or the drum kit and the the microphone, the guitars, that stuff is so expensive to buy. And it's almost worthless when you get bored of it. Because everyone got bored of it at the same time. I remember donating uh, my House of the Dead guns to a church yard sale. Because uh, uh, GameStop was like, we'll give you $2 for it. And I was like, yeah. well, I'll just donate it to someone who at least could, like, you know, sell it or something. Pretend it's but, worth 15 yeah. on your tax right off. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I really miss Rock Band. I always thought it was really great. Get a couple people together, just screw off, have some fun. And you can't unless you want to drop $900. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's, ins- well, that's insane. That's That's crazy. We need a new rock band. I remember reading there was some issue with like licensing and sales were down, but I'm hoping maybe we'll get back into the swing of things and maybe they'll bring it back. I'm I'm for it. All right. We're back whoa, to you, Josh. Whoa, whoa, guy, guy. Th- there's a portal opening up behind me. What the? <laughs> oh, what the? Oh, it's me. <laughs> Josh. Josh. This is Josh from the future. Yes, we get more handsome as we age. Stop staring at me. Yeah. I know how good we look, and we're still fit as a fiddle. Listen, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to tell you that around 2024, maybe 2025, the next big MMO called Ashes of Creation is going to fully release. I know you've been tracking it for a couple years now, and I know it looks awesome. Well, it is awesome. It's everything you wanted an MMO to be ever since your EverQuest days. I know you think you've learned your lesson and you're too busy to get sucked into one, but I'm here to tell you it's probably best that you don't play it. You'll like it too much, and you'll have finally found that MMO you've been searching for for all the... Hey, hey, what, why are you pushing me away, man? No, I'm trying to <laughs> warn you, Josh. No, don't push that button. You'll send me back to the future. I'll... Okay. Where'd he go? Uh, the future Josh, I think, is a liar because <laughs> there's no way I oh, think is going to be that good. That's still me. But <laughs> <laughs> Ashes Your of Creation looks incredible. It does. I just don't believe it's going to be that at release. Well, future Josh just confirmed it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness that is a definite deep dive if that oh, ever yeah. comes out it will oh, right it will never come out <laughs> what a very hopeful future josh <laughs> yeah oh how funny i remember we covered a few updates along the way of ashes of creation and finally at some point we're like all right let's just ignore this game <laughs> until it comes out it's nowhere on the horizon anytime no, so. yeah. nowhere yeah all right michael uh, since we're on uh, ma- uh, massive multiplayer online role playing games, I don't know why I felt the need to just say the whole thing. Like MMOs, now, mm-hmm. now since we're on MMOs, um, listen, past Michael, I don't know what year it is. I think it's year 2012, something like that. But um, I know how much you've been excited about Star Trek Online. 
I know how excited <laughs> you are to move on from World of Warcraft and play the next MMO that will be the Warcraft killer. I know there's like a million people playing this game in month one, and I know that it's $15 a month. You can only afford a little bit here and there. Listen, don't pay $300 for the lifetime subscription to Star Trek Online, which if you do the math is 20 months. And if you're doing the math, I know because you did this math, you're like, after 20 months, this game is free. I'm going to play this game for more than 20 months. Because the game is going to be free to play six months after it releases. <laughs> Past Mike, well, you're oh, an idiot. Great. Yeah, legitimately, it was $300 for a lifetime sub. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, if I play this for 20 months, which I've been playing World of Warcraft for like seven, eight years at the time, you know, because I didn't play right away when it launched. I was like, that's like 1200 bucks I put in World of Warcraft. $300 for a lifetime subscription to Star Trek Online. This is great. I played that game for like three months. Then three months later, it went free to play, and I was like, I felt very burned. Now, I guess they do give you a lot of stuff in games still to this day if you got the lifetime sub, but since I'll probably never go back and play that game, it's like, well, I mean, I, I've hit it every once in a while just to see a spaceship and not actually play it, but that's insane. It's a great idea for them, though, because they're like, hey, we get all this money up front, and then like nobody did it, so free to play, and I wasted $300. Yeah. Dude, the lifetime purchases are always so tempting, but like, do you guys remember TiVo? Yep. Yeah. Oh, remember yeah. how like everyone had TiVo? Yep. Do you do you remember replay TV? <laughs> oh my god. A little bit. Maybe. Maybe you remember they were like the yeah. off brand TiVo. Yeah. They had where you had to pay monthly to use the DVR, which of course you're already paying a hundred dollars a month for your cable, and now you're paying monthly for your DVR. Replay TV had an option two hundred dollars and will give you use for a lifetime. And this was in like two thousand five. And of course I thought I'm going to use this for the rest of my life. Right. Why would I ever not need a DVR? And I paid the $200 instead of the $5 a month. That's how much it, that's oh, all it was. Wow. Five a month. I paid 200. They went out of business like, like 13 months later and they were just gone and you couldn't even use it you anyway. You can't even get oh. your money back at that point. Yep. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm with you, Michael. I've been burned. Subscriptions, not the best idea. <laughs> no, no, maybe not. It's. I mean, it seemed like a great idea at the time. I'm like, I'll play this game forever. Nope. And then the irony is, I played Warcraft like you, Michael, for years and years on end, and I'd always stare at the discount for paying like three months or six months at a time. Right. Never did it. Paid fifteen a month every single month that I played yep. Overwatch <laughs> yep. or Overwatch World of Warcraft. Yeah, so lost a lot of money there. Only I was the person that played paid fifteen a month to play Overwatch. This is loot boxes <laughs> for your loot box. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, back to me here for the next one, huh? All right. Th- this is a fun one. I I might have shared this story once, or I might not have. I don't remember. If I did, it was a long time ago. All right, Paul. Look, I think it's I think it's two thousand four for you now. You're, you're a young man in college. And you've got your OG Xbox with the behemoth controller. All right. You're about to sign up for Xbox Live. And they're going to ask you for a username. And you're going to try your normal username. It's going to be unavailable. And Xbox is going to give you a random name and ask you if you want to keep it. And um, that username is going to be Pained STD <laughs> with STD in what? all capitals. All right. Now... I know that you're 20 years old and you're going to think that's the funniest thing in the world and you're going to smash accept as soon as you can, but I have some bad news for you. You're going to have to call Xbox Live support in a couple years when you accidentally uh, pay for it for like four months and you don't use it. You're going to call, you're going to ask them for a refund. They're going to ask you to verify your username and... um you're going to feel like an absolute juvenile <laughs> moron at that point. So just pick any other username, anything you want, just not pained STD. It's not a good idea. I think that's the greatest idea, Paul. Oh, man. Can you believe Microsoft, like with their procedurally generated How names? Yeah, you know, like you get that where it's like, right. Oh, Josh, one, two, three is unavailable. Would you try Josh five, eight, nine, seven? Like right. we're yep. used to seeing that. They legitimately shot back with, why don't you try pained STD? Oh Let's try goodness. it. Yeah. Why don't Why don't you you try gotta that? go, man. It's yeah. fate, Paul. It's that was fate. my that was my Xbox <laughs> Live name for like six years. I wanna I math guru is out there. Tell me what the odds are that with twenty seven right letters in the English alphabet or twenty six, however many there are, that 
std would be put together in completely random because i'm sure it's it's like you know word like adjective adverb whatever and then three letters randomly that that's how the std came <laughs> like holy cow my nick my so name funny. that it re- that it recommended for me i actually used for a while was sure fuzzball like nine four five like mm. a very confident ball of lint like that's a very sure fuzzball right there i was like oh, that's adorable <laughs> but not paying std no that's better than a timid fuzzball yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. Did you did you did, did you feel the need because I would be this guy to explain to the support person who does not care at Microsoft? Listen, I didn't I didn't pick this. This was you guys that did this when you're trying to change the name. I didn't. I just. I'm sure I turned beet red, and I <laughs> and I probably had like one of those like really um, sorrowful, reluctant tones. You know, okay, yes, but- sir. And and what was your username? Pained STD. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I do know the username. Yeah, I was kind of curious if you guys ever had any goofy or funny usernames along the way. So Michael had Sure Fuzzball. Sure what about fuzzball. you, Josh? I was always trying to have like the edgy, cool sounding names. You know, like I, the one that I thought was really awesome at the time. And then now I look back and I'm like, that's kind of dumb. Was my username was Mourn Demon. Like a oh. demon of, like, of mourning, you know, that it would feed <laughs> yeah. on people's mourning. Like when, and I was like, a mourn demon. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> I got funny. older and I was like, this is dumb. Like, <laughs> what kind of name is this? <laughs> oh, man. Back in the days of AOL Instant Messenger, which, by the way, shout out to all our listeners who are like 35 <laughs> and older. Yes. Uh, I, I remember making new usernames like once every few months because you would just like want a new one that you thought was cool. And I don't know why. I was like a freshman in high school. I thought it was really cool to name my AOL account Ozzy Everclear because I was listening to a lot of Ozzy Osbourne and Everclear at the time and wow. thought, why don't we put these two things together and make that my username? So I, I rolled with band. that for a while. It'd be a really weird band, Ozzy Everclear. Like if Ozzy yeah. was doing Everclear's music, how would that work? <laughs> It would be very interesting. Everyone on the podcast that's under the age of 35 is like, who's Everclear? Yeah. What's an Aussie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Everclear. My wife hated Everclear so much. I don't so like much. Everclear. I'm with, no, I'm, with, yeah, I'm with your wife on this one. I hate every song by them. I hate every <laughs> single song by those guys. Oh, I, I still ride for uh, everything to everyone. That that All wasn't right. a bad song. All right, Josh. I got a back quick around one. to you. Super quick. Here we go. Josh. You'll see an ad for this thing called the Wii U. You'll think it's great. The ad will make it sound like it's great. It's not. Don't. Just don't buy it. Yes, I know your wife thinks she wants it to, but just trust me. Save your money. Go spend it on Blackjack or something useful. (laughs) The Wii U sucked, dude. But it didn't didn't need to. It didn't need to suck. It just didn't have good games. It did suck. But it didn't have to. They, I mean, it didn't have no to. Good games. Wii Bowling was the only game that was even remotely... Because it's funny, because I told my wife that I was going to slander the Wii U tonight, and then she was like, no. And I was like, <laughs> what games did we play on that? And then she was like, bowling. And I'm like, what else? And uh-huh. she was like, uh, bowling. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you played Breath of the Wild on your Wii I did play Breath of the U. Wild, on, but that was at the very end of its lifespan. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I feel like two games do not a console make. And it even like sucked on the Wii U, like yeah. the Breath of the Wild. Yeah. It was way better on the Switch. Yeah. Yep. So it's like, yeah, that, not even a positive story. I don't think I ever played a Wii U once in my life. You're not I think missing I, really? I, yeah. Never You're not missing out. So here's the thing. Like we had a Wii U as well. And it had the capability of doing some cool stuff. They just didn't capitalize on it. Like, I remember there was a, a, a mini game kind of like Mario Party, but because one person could hold the screen, they could see something different than everybody else looking at the TV. And so they started incorporating some like asymmetrical multiplayer games. I remember in one of them, you would run around as a ghost and everybody else could look at the screen with flashlights. And you could see in the dark as the ghost and try to touch people, and then you would like take them out, and they would have to turn with their flashlights. And so they 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 had some neat ideas like that, but there was like not a single Pokemon game came out on the Wii U. The the Breath of the Wild came out really late. You were kind of stuck playing old remasters. Like we bought mm. Wind Waker HD on the Wii U, and that's probably the game we played the most. And I had already played it on the Wii. So, yep. like, the Wii U was just, no one really asked for the console. They didn't really give you anything good, and it just died. Yeah. 
Bummer. So you're saying my fut- I give good advice, Paul, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Pro- probably good advice. Just wait a few <laughs> yeah. years. <laughs> Buy something else. All right, Michael, swinging back your way. How many we got time for? Because I got two more. I'll do a quick one real fast, see if it comes back to me. Um, sure. I just want to tell myself, listen, uh, past Michael, I don't know when in the past I'm talking to, maybe a long time ago. Uh, you need to play Silent Hill and Resident Evil series as they come out, because now that you're 40 years old and you have played neither of them really at all, and they're unplayable, you're missing out, bro. Go mm. go play those games as they come out, period. Because they're unplayable now. Yeah. A- and as of like today, the Silent Hill 2 remake news broke, So because yeah. we're recording this earlier than the day it releases, so yeah. So maybe you'll get a chance. You'll get to play the maybe. remake, Michael. Yeah, I hope. Cross my fingers. Yeah. Guess who has two thumbs and never played a Silent Hill game in his life? Michael? <laughs> this guy. Wait, <laughs> I've, you have two I've of never us? played Silent you Hill. You have three thumbs also, Paul, so you can't trick us. <laughs> you know? I'm so confused what? right now. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have two thumbs. Uh, don't need to start that rumor. Yeah, I've never played a Silent Hill game ever. Uh, they're great. They're really, really good, man. Silent Hill, when they came out, were phenomenal. Uh, I don't know that they hold up today, but I'm yeah, actually pretty excited for the remake, too. Because um, if they do it right, Silent Hill is one of the scarier, like, creepier games. So I'm excited. Mm. But yeah, you missed well, that's out. That's what I heard. Yeah, because yeah, I, I saw screenshots when I, was, when I was coming up with this. I pulled up some screenshots, and I'm like, uh, that would be almost impossible to play. The graphics sort of just... And then I, I heard that the voice acting is like legitimately terrible in the first two games. Now, if you go back, it's like, hey, it'll just I don't know. That's my apparently that's my impression of bad voice acting. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Moving on. All right, what do you got, right. Paul? Coming back to me. All right. Hi, Paul. It's it, it's Paul. It's me again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I see. The, oh, I see. You've got your Nintendo sixty four, your very first console. Congratulations. I, I know mom and dad didn't want you to own a gaming system. They thought you'd be addicted. And I know that you had to wait all the way until freshman or actually the summer before freshman year of high school. Um, you know, I, I know that that mom and dad are about to take you on that really long road trip to Yellowstone and you're going to be in the car like driving 15 hours a day for the next seven days. And um, mom and dad just bought that travel size TV and the power <laughs> inverter, and you're going to be able to play 64 oh on goodness. your road trip. All right. You've never been more excited in your life. I know you hate road trips. This is going to make it bearable. Um, you don't have any games, though, is the problem. And I know that mom is going to tell you, you get to rent two games from gamers, which is a mom pop store that's no longer around. Um, they're going to let you pick out two games to play. And your first pick is spot on. You're going to pick Super Smash Brothers. It's a classic. Even just playing by yourself, you're going to play it a ton. It's an absolute blast. But you need to ignore your second pick because, brother, Superman 64 is going to be oh, so horrifically no! bad. You're going to play it for about half an hour, and you're going to beat yourself up over not having another game to play. Oh, my goodness. What a terrible game to just randomly yeah. choose. What a bad pick, right? Oh it's like one of the goodness. all-time worst games. Yes. That was before we even knew that comic book like like or movie games don't do well with games. I what am I saying? The, wow. you, know, you know how it is cuz there was a lot of bad like comic book and movie games that came out like around that time. Yep. That was like one of the first ones that was like, "Wait, this is no good." Have you watched footage of Superman 64 it's lately? No, bad, not in a while. Dude. I, did. I dialed it up today. Yeah, it's real bad. Like half the game is just you flying seemingly four miles an hour in the sky as Superman. And the game runs so badly that they covered everything in fog. So it's like you're flying, but you can't see anything and you just fly through rings and the frame rate keeps dropping really low. It's so bad. I didn't even know this until today. There are streamers who will still play Superman 64 today because they don't believe it's as bad as they've heard. And just look it up on YouTube. You'll find they're all like four hours long. And I watched a couple where I just skipped to the end. And they are so glad to be done with the game when they beat it. And it it looks horrific. It plays horrific. There's not a single good thing you can say about Superman 64. Just 100% pain. Painful yeah. experience altogether. Yep. So anyway, that that's my piece of advice. Oh uh, coming back to you, Josh. This will right. have to be kind of quick. I was going to say this is probably time. the last one. So, okay. 
Hey, slightly older Josh. This is slightly older Josh. I know. I'm just a few months ahead of you from the future. Look, I'm here with a dire warning. You're going to meet a guy. You'll hit it off. You'll become friends. At some point, this guy's going to talk to you about a game and how awesome it is. He's going to tell you how amazing this game is, but don't believe him. That game's terrible. It's like getting surgery without anesthesia. It's like having a tooth pulled out with pliers. It's like... Well, it's it's just terrible, really. Somehow you'll he'll convince you to play it. I'm here to tell you, don't pick anything else. Fortnite, E.T., Superman 64, <laughs> anything, literally anything will be better than this game. What's his name in the game? His name is Michael Butler, and he's going to suggest something called Elite mm. Dangerous. Oh, I hate you so it's much. It's not elite, but yeah. it is dangerous to your happiness. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Double drive-bys on Elite Dangerous, both oh, the intro man. and the Josh. Oh, man. Just stab me I in had the heart. to, Michael. I had to. I, I was went, really into your story for a minute. I, I was like, what's going <laughs> with this? Like, what's happening? I yeah, kept like, go. wondering when the realization was going to set in. I was, I was on that train, I, and then I, I just jumped off. Now, as much, I do love trolling Michael on this. It's a long-running joke. But at the same time, when you claim a game is the worst game that you have ever played, you kind of say, hey, I, if I can advise myself, don't play that game. Yeah, especially when it's in my top five, I think. I, I, yeah, like, you do yeah. have some fans that are on your side, Michael, in your defense, you because do. we do pick on you so much. We yeah, actually do have some ones. listeners that have been like, hey, I'm with Michael. Elite Dangerous is great. Boom. Those are the right ones. They're correct. Oh, poorly All dangerous. Right. I, sorry. Sorry. Emotional I damage. I, I feel better now. How dare you? Right. <laughs> Going on to you, Michael. Last one. All right. Uh, talking to Michael, uh, circa April 16th, 2011. Okay, listen. I want to tell you three things real fast about movies and TV. And you need to sit down for this, okay? Next year, on October 30th, Disney's going to buy Star Wars. And you're going to think this is the best thing that's ever happened because oh, you're going to get lots no. of Star Wars. But it's all going to be terrible except for Rogue One period and maybe some of the tv shows but the movies are basically bad fan fiction they're bad and listen star trek is going to be reinvigorated by the remerger of viacom and cbs so paramount and cbs are getting back together but listen here's what's going to happen you're going to have to sit through discovery and picard being so lackluster and outright almost awful but the good news is in like seven years, a show called Strange New Worlds is coming, and you're really yes. going to like that one. And lastly, tomorrow, I don't want you to watch HBO's new TV show called Game of Thrones, and oh. I just don't want you to know why. Just don't start watching it, period. All we'll of your see. favorite franchises are going <laughs> to crap. <laughs> watch Game of Thrones. Just stop after season seven. That's right. way better advice. Yeah, Six yeah, and yeah. a half, maybe. <laughs> yeah. All of the best friends. Man, Star Trek and Star Wars were just done terribly, and Game of Thrones was too. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, just don't watch it. Tomorrow, past Michael, circa April 16th, 2011. Oh, uh, is there is there anything worse than being super excited about like your favorite movie franchise and then it just sucks? Yeah. Yeah. No, like, there's Star Wars worse. Episode Nine, I was just like shaking my head the whole time. Like, how could it be this bad? It's awful. When it comes to movies, I, it doesn't take much, man. So I'm yeah. always like, eh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. No. No, it was seven. It was seven that I was okay with. A lot of people complained about uh, seven because they were like, oh, it's it's too much like A New Hope. And I'm like, they're trying to bring back the old fans because they didn't like the prequels like, and kind of make it, it gets back on track. But yeah, by the end, I was like, this is a train wreck. It's like really bad. Like, and that's a, that sounds like to say that it's like bad fan fiction is actually an insult to fan fiction because there's actually some good fan fiction out there. Yeah, I hear you, Michael. That's that's some good advice. Yeah. All right, Paul, bring us home, buddy. All right. Hey, past Paul. Uh, I got got one last piece of advice for you. It's uh, the summer of 1999 where you're at. And I, I just want to tell you. Stop and smell the roses, all right? Your your single favorite game memory is going to come later with World of Warcraft, but right now, right before going into high school, you don't have a care in the world, you finally got your Nintendo 64, your family has a computer, this is probably going to be your peak game time in your lifetime. It may not be as big of a scale as games to come, like all the MMOs, but you've got your best friends. You're playing some incredible games split screen or 1v1 online. You're playing the likes of Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, Smash Brothers, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Age of Empires 2, Command of Con Command and Conquer, 
Starcraft, Mario Party, and Descent. Oh. On the whole, I don't think it's ever going to get better for you gaming wise. Oh, oh man! That's now is that good. is that because of the times, or is that just because it's that the was the age of being a young teenager when all those games were? Out? It's a hundred percent the it's the time in your life. You know what I mean? That those games tie to. Like I, I yeah. have the same ones. They're old. You know, much older than the Nintendo sixty four. But same thing. <laughs> same thing. You know. Like we're like, wait, we can make pixels move on a screen. This yeah. is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> color this paddle. This paddle <laughs> has colors. a wheel that I turn, and this bar moves up and down. Oh, it bats man. this square back and forth. <laughs> I oh, think man. I think yeah. everybody has that year or that moment or that time. You know, I think that's pretty normal. I think mine's this year because I played a lot right? of games. This we have year. made Michael like, play more games than he has ever yeah. played in his life. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this year's it's great. Like, we got some great like games. Like, best game is yeah. <laughs> The best game is Weird West. Like this is it's not been a great year for gaming, but um, uh, I played Cyberpunk finally. We're that was almost awesome. there. There you we're go. Almost there. We got some good <laughs> games <know>. coming up. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, I think we are basically out of time here for this episode. Any anything to add? Anything you guys want to say at this point? Uh, um, other other than we've made some bad decisions in the past. Past past Josh by Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> by bitcoin yeah. yeah also um past michael get good oh yeah <laughs> start start your aim training michael yeah oh there you uh, go learn to use a controller for fps or just learn how to play fps and ge- learn how to play first person shooter games in general oh very nice all right. Well, to all our listeners out there, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please make sure to check out MultiplayerSquad.com if you want to help support the show on Patreon. And also, we would love to have you guys follow us on socials. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at MultiplayerPod. And we also have a free Discord server. It's actually really been hopping lately. Today, it was like running all day. People were just chatting yeah. about games. That was a good day. Really friendly server. Yeah, great day. Um, there is a link in the episode description. We'd love to have you guys on there as well. And we will be back on Thursday for This Week in Gaming. And then coming back around next Monday, we're going to have a deep dive on Devour, which will be perfect timing with Halloween. Yeah. So... That's the upcoming schedule. That's what we got coming for you all. Hope you all enjoy it. And until we come back on Thursday, happy gaming. All right. Cheers, all. See you, everybody.